Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. My name is Ryan Cristiani. Uh, if you're new to this series, Let's Learn ES6 is about looking at some of the new features available to us in ES6, uh, kind of breaking them down and letting um, you kind of see how they work. So today, uh, I'm going to look at generators. We're nearing the end of the video series, so generators uh, are one of the last topics we'll, we will be looking at. Um, but I will be having another video series coming up soon. Uh, I'm actually working on a video for it probably later today as well. Uh, so you should be seeing uh, some more content like this coming up very soon. So generators are a function type in JavaScript or in ES6. Um, that allow us to pause execution uh, of the function call. So it basically allows us to uh, uh, run some code up to a specific point, pause it, and then we get to decide when to run it afterwards. And this is really great for control flow purposes. If we want to kind of do something, wait, and then keep doing something and kind of go from there. So uh, the way that it works is you use the function keyword uh, generator, uh, sorry, the function keyword, and then you put the star here to actually define that it will be a generator function. And uh, let's just make our first one, like my first generator, generator, like that. And basically, in order to pause execution, we use this yield keyword. And what happens is when we call our generator, it returns an iterator object. Now, we've seen these before. Uh, these are similar to the uh, iterator objects that map and set uh, return when we call uh, specific methods on them. Basically, an iterator object in ES6 is a method or an object that returns the next keyword that allows us to iterate through the values. So uh, basically, I can go console.log hi, sorry, here. And then I can yield, so I can stop execution there. And then I can console.log buy. And let's see how this works in our browser. So uh, I just have a script.js script file here and an index.html. And let's just open this up in Chrome. OK, so uh, I'm going to store this on a variable. So like my first gen equals my generator. So you have to uh, call the generator and store it because it's returning an object. Now you'll notice nothing happened. It didn't actually run that console.log. We have to use the next method, so my first gen uh, dot next to actually like run it the first time. Notice it runs high and then it yields. So the yield actually returns this. Uh, and it returns basically what value is are we yielding? We're not yielding anything yet. I'll show you that later. And then is it done or not? In this case, it is not done. So how do we yield again? Well, we can just run it again and we say buy and we see that the value is still undefined, but we see that it is done now. So we are done executing this function. There's no more uh, yields. There's nothing else to do. We're done. We're out of here. So that's pretty cool. So we're able to like pause execution, maybe do some other code, and then run something else uh, using that next um, method. Let's actually look at a different example here. So let's make another function. We'll call it a grocery list here. And what we're going to do is we are going to yield out the different grocery items. So sorry about that. Uh, yield milk. Oops. Ew. Uh, that should probably put a semicolon there. Yield uh, cheese. And then one more. Let's just like yield out uh, chips. Why not? There we go. Cool. So same thing. Let's, uh, let's make a variable here, though. We'll go shopping equals grocery list. We'll call that. So we are yielding these three items here, uh, and what we what's happening here is when we yield to the right, or when we sorry put a value to the right of the yield keyword, it allows us to actually get that value when we call the next method. So let's save this. Let's jump back here. Let's refresh, and if I go shopping, we can see that it is this generator object here. Uh, but more importantly, if I call shopping dot next we see that it returns this object that has this value. Uh, so now we can actually yield out specific values. So if I call shopping next again, I'm going to get cheese. And because it is yielding out uh, the value, we could actually call shopping.next.value if we wanted. And that would return us the next value, in this case, chips. Now, the cool thing is that uh, we can actually keep calling shopping next as many times as we want. Uh, but you'll notice that, again, the done has become true. So we can't actually get anything. Uh, it's just going to keep saying done true. But you could keep calling it over and over and over. And it's just going to return the same object that it's, uh, it's been done and there's no value stored there. 
The cool thing is that because this returns an iterator object, we can use uh, the for of loop to actually loop through the values. Again, just like in the map and set uh, video, we use the for loop to iterate through those, those maps and sets. So let's try this here. We have this uh, uh, shopping item. So let's go bar, or sorry, for let uh, item of shopping. So it has to be for of, not a for in loop or anything like that. Uh, and we can console.log item. It allows us to iterate through this and boom, just pop it out on the page. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah. I do want to show you some code that I have down here. So that's sort of all I want to show you right now. There's uh, much more defini uh, definitions and des uh, uh, descriptions, excuse me, of this stuff in my book. Um, I'm finishing up that chapter right now. I'll talk about that in a second, but I want to show you some code here. Um, because generators are used to pause execution of something, and it can actually pause the execution of our program, uh, it's actually a really common pattern to use this to uh, kind of like make uh, asynchronous or synchronous asynchronous functions. Very similar to if you've ever used async await, uh, which is not quite in ES uh, 7 or 8 yet, but uh, should be coming up in ECMAScript at some point. Uh, there's this kind of uh, idea of having a coroutine, uh, or sometimes you'll see this called a co, that will allow you to use generators to, to call specific asynchronous uh, actions, wait until the value comes back, and then call it again, or call another one. So you kind of just go like line by line as opposed to uh, really diving into uh, you know, a, a more complex promise-based um, approach. Maybe not more complex, but like a, a promise-based approach. So this is a fairly common thing. So there's this library co uh, by TJ. Uh, and also I've seen this code uh, demonstrated by Kyle Simpson and uh, Axel Roshmeyer. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, so this is the code that I have in here. I think this is an adaptation of uh, Kyle Simpson's code. Um, but let's kind of talk about it. So basically we have uh, this get Pokemon function. We're using fetch here. Um, to go and use the Pokemon API to just fetch a uh, Pokemon by a specific ID. Fetch returns a promise, and uh, what it does is we have to change that body into a, um, a JSON body, and then we can basically uh, go from there. And in our main Pokemon coroutine here, uh, what we do is we pass it a generator callback function that will be used up here, so it gets stored there. And then we can, inside of it, yield the things that we would like. So uh, I want to get the Pokemon uh, for Pokemon 1, uh, Bulbasaur. Uh, and then I want to get Pokemon for Pokemon 250, or 242, which I have no idea what that is. We have to pass back our Pokemon here because what gets happened, what happens with Koro is it actually returns a function that is going to apply uh, the next method with some arguments. So it actually kind of keeps this going. Again, I'll explain this further in my book, um, but the really cool thing is if we go to our console now, refresh this in a second, hopefully, uh, Pokemon API has been kind of slow. There we go. We get to see that our, our data comes back. It comes back uh, at the same time, uh, although it, it's still an asynchronous event, it comes back at the same time together uh, so that when we're down here, we have both of those things. It's really, really cool. So it allows us to kind of uh, uh, have these nice, uh, maybe easier to grok or easier to reason about um, asynchronous events happening, but reading top to bottom. And this is actually uh, paving the way. So I think generator functions actually allow us to pave the way for actually implementing the async await functions uh, inside of ES. Actually, I'm not sure what ES version it will be in ECMAScript. Uh, I'm probably like eight or nine, eight maybe. There's a, a TC39 GitHub, which I'll maybe link to in the description below where you can see where uh, specific proposals are at. Anyways, that's what I wanted to show you today. Uh, if you want to learn more about generators and actually read about uh, and walk through this co-row routine, um, check out letslearnes6.com. Uh, the book is almost finished. I increased the um, early access uh, time period because I was really busy with a conference talk recently, uh, and I'm still trying to bang out some more chapters. Uh, I am finishing up the uh, generators chapter uh, probably this week, so this is a perfect time to grab it uh, for $5 off. And yeah, you can see all the things that we'll be learning uh, here. Uh, even in the Beyond chapter, we'll be talking about uh, ES7 things. So uh, it's very small update ES7, but 
we'll just see them there. And I'm working on that generator chapter now. So head on over to letslearnes6.com. Grab yourself a copy when generators uh, are available, or sorry, when the generator chapter is available, you'll get that update instantly. Um, because once you grab the book, you're going to get all the updates forever. So that's it for uh, today's video. Uh, again, uh, probably one more video from the Let's Learn ES6 series. And then I'll be doing a new series called Let's Code Along. Uh, basically, it is going to be sort of like fun project based code alongs. Uh, I'll have some uh, predefined things that I'm going to kind of like go into the project with, but uh, I want to just kind of like uh, explore uh, little problems or little applications with you and uh, hit some roadblocks and kind of like work through and code and solve those problems. Um, with you. So it'll be fun to kind of watch and learn and uh, hopefully be enjoyable and we'll be using lots of ES6 and stuff like that. So that's it for today. Uh, again, uh, if you haven't, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter at rchristiani. Uh, head on over to letslearnes6.com to pick up a copy of my book and I'll see you again soon. Bye.